Hey guys, welcome to video two of the constitutional isomers video. Today we're going to be going into a little bit harder examples of constitutional isomers that may not be so obvious. And to start off, we're going to be going, we're going to be trying to draw all this constitutional isomers of the C6H12. And I should really write uh, constitutional over there. Uh, yeah, because if you if I wrote isomers, that's a pretty blanket term and that could make it a lot, it could give you a lot more structures to be drawing. So we're going to try to draw the isomers, the constitutional isomers of C6H12. So I find it's easiest to start out with just drawing the main carbon atoms, right? And so we have six carbon atoms, so one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the number. And it may seem kind of uh, excessive when I constantly number carbons, but you'll find it's a very good habit to get into when you get into reactions. Uh, oftentimes, you're gonna be there. Are people who would try to be drawing the products of their reaction yet end up losing a carbon, or just forgetting to draw one when the reaction would uh, preserve the amount of carbons. And so, if you numbered it and you saw, oh, I have six in the reactants, yet only five in the carbons, when I should have had six, you know you did something wrong, and it's a really good way to check yourself. All right, because uh, Further down the road, the reactions can get complicated, and uh, this can just help keep everything straight. So once we have our carbons, so let's look at our hydrogens to make sure everything's good in that department. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right, so our formula is C6H14. So what's problematic is we have 14 hydrogens, yeah, we only yeah we're supposed to have two less than that. So how do we fix that? Because this is not even one of the structures that we can draw at this point. This is not the correct molecular formula. So our goal is to lose two hydrogens. So how do we lose two hydrogens? Well, uh, if you've been paying attention, if you've paid attention to lecture, we can do something called uh, we can essentially draw a double bond, because a double bond removes two hydrogens from the uh, carbon chain. And I'll show you guys that in a second. So I can erase two of these hydrogens, draw a double bond, right, to preserve the octet. And that has just fixed our molecular formula. Now we have the correct amount. We can count all the hydrogens we have. We have one, two, three here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we have 12 hydrogens there. And now what we have to do is we have to draw the rest of the isomers. And so I know this unit is called conformational analysis of alkanes. And this is an alkene, but this is included actually in the content for this uh, part of the class. All right. And so if you're wondering what the name is for this, uh, for this molecule, it's going to be one hexene. Ene because it's an alkene. And it's actually one because we, could, we want to minimize the numbering of that double bond. So we would be putting it here one, two, three, four, five, six. And when naming alkenes, um, you have to just put the double bond. You, the number of the double bond is going to be the lowest number you can make it. So even though it's attached to carbon one and two, we only uh, write carbon one, so one hexene. So what's the next step? Well, now we're gonna have to draw the remaining isomers of this. And so again, it's probably easiest to just, uh, in this case, when you have the, uh, alkenes, rather than move carbons, try to just move the double bond first. All right, because moving a double bond in an alkene Keen makes it a completely different molecule. So let's try it. What I'm going to do, and remember these aren't curved arrows that I'm about to draw, I'm just showing where I'm going to be moving everything. So I'm going to take this double bond and I'm just going to move it one over. Just flip it. So now we're going to get this structure and if you want to name it using what I told you before, feel free to pause the video right now. So I'm going to number this again and this is now, because we want to number it in the lowest uh, carbon count, it's going to be 2 hexene. All right, again, the ene, because it's now keen. 
So that's a second constitutional isomer. All right. Now let's try to draw a third one. Well, again, try to just move the double bond. We take it, put it right over there. We can get this structure. And that is going to be if you want. Let's number it first before we do anything. Okay. And if we try to name it now, it's going to be hexene again. And the numbering is going to be 3 hexene. Okay? So that's 3 of the isomers. Now, we can't move the double bond anymore just because if we move it to between the 5 and 4 bond, we'd have this exact structure. And if we move it to this bond, we'd have this same one. So now we have, what we have to do is now we're going to, have to start moving atoms. All right. And so instead of starting from here, I'm just going to start back from this structure. And I'm just going to move one atom. So I'm going to take our carbon um, 6 right over here, and I'm going to move it. So I can move it back. I can essentially connect it to carbon 5 because it's already connected to carbon 5. So I'll move it to carbon 4 and put it right there. So what this is going to be is it's going to go like this. We're going to put it here, and let's number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And here's our carbon 6. Okay? And let's just make sure that everything we've done so far has the, exact, has the correct formula of C6H12. So this one right here has six carbons. Hydrogens are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That checks out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That checks out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That checks out. All right, so we have four right now. Let's try to draw another one. Well, I, you know, I'm going to just erase these hydrogens that I drew in. All right, so let's try to move the carbon again. So I'm going to take the same carbon six, and I'm just going to try to move it to another spot. Let's try to move it to carbon three. So we have five, four, three, two, one. It's there. And we have that. And that's going to be our carbon six. All right, and so now we have another isomer. And if you want, let's just go through the hydrogens here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so that one also checks out. So what else can we do? Well, we can't move any of the carbons anymore uh, along the chain just because it would give us the same thing. So now you're going to have to start thinking a little bit more abstract and in the non-linear way. All right, and so what we can do, and this may not be obvious uh, right away, is we can draw, instead of a chain, we can draw a closed ring structure. All right, so I'm going to redraw this molecule over here, just for reference. Okay, renumber, one, two, three, four, five, six. And what we can do now is we can draw a closed ring structure. And why we can do that, you'll see in a second. So six carbons, I'm going to draw a six carbon ring. All right, now we have our six carbons, let's just count. But now let's look at the hydrogens. We have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So our hydrogens check out there. And what and uh, the reason that we can do this, we can essentially turn an alkene 
and turn it into a closed ring structure and keep the same exact molecular formula is shown through this formula called an IHD formula. IHD. And so what the IHD is, is it called the index of hydrogen deficiency. And essentially it just tells us how many hydrogens are lost given a certain molecular formula. And it's a really good tool. So I'll sh quickly write out the formula. And if you did the um, constitutional isomers problem set, you might have already seen it. I'm just going to just change that color. So the, car the C represents carbons. N equals nitrogens. H equals hydrogen. And X equals the halogens, so like chlorine, bromine. So what you do is essentially input the amount you have in each. So if you have six carbons, we'd write a six here, plus two, plus the amount of nitrogens, we have zero, minus the amount of hydrogens we have. And so we have 12 minus the amount of halogens, that's zero. And when you input that in and solve, uh, and remember, you can't have a calculator in the test, so you're going to have to do this on paper in your head, you're going to get an IHD of one. And so what that means is you are allowed to have either one double bond or one ring. So it's one or the other, not both. And that also means this is not an alkane. If you had an IHD of zero, that's an alkane. If you have an IHD of one, that means uh, you have to have a double bond or a ring in the structure. And so if you do this before the problem, before you start drawing, it'll make the problem much quicker. Now there are more um, constitutional isomers for C6H12, but we're going to be cover, but um, we're not going to be covering that in the rest of this video. We're going to go more in depth into IHD in the next video and how to use it to help you solve the problems. And you will be able to see how it's a really quick and easy way of uh, getting a uh, good five points on the test, whether it's a multiple choice or short answer question. And if I were you, this is something I would put on my card because it's definitely useful and a chance. I'm probably 99% sure it will come up in your test. All right. And so see you guys in the next video. If something didn't make sense, feel free to email me. My email's on the review page or ask a TA. Uh, we're here to help you guys. And good luck, and I'll see you in the next video.